Hi! In this video, we'll introduce the start function. So here's a question. Where does our program start? What is the first thing that happens when we click the run button? Well, up until now, Carol has been starting at the top of the program and doing each command line by line in the order that they come, starting from the top and going down. But now we're going to switch it up. We're going to do something different. We're going to introduce the start function. So from now on, all of our programs start by calling the start function. When we click the run button, the start function is automatically called. So what is the start function? Well, the start function is just a normal function. It's a function named start. And our program code goes inside the start function. So the first line of the start function is the first command that gets executed during our program. And the idea here is we really want our program to read like a story. It should be very clear to the reader what our program is trying to achieve. So we want to say to start off with, to start in the start function, Carol goes to the pile of balls. Then Carol picks them all up. Then Carol comes back to the starting point. We want it to read like a story, like natural language. So if we have something like this, that doesn't really work. I, I don't see the story here when I look at this. I just see a bunch of moves and turn lefts and take balls. I want something like this. So we want to move away from this into something more like this. So the idea here is program readability is very important. We need other people to be able to read our programs. So we want our programs to read like natural language, like English. So a reader should be able to look at our code and very quickly understand what it's doing. So really, we want to be moving towards programs that look like this. Inside the start function, we call a series of functions that each do a specific job, and they have a very useful, readable name that describes their job. So to start, Carol goes to the pile, Carol picks up the pile, and Carol comes back to start. This is a great program. If each of these functions are defined correctly, then the program works. So we want to be moving towards programs like this and away from programs like this. This is chaotic. I don't actually know what's going on here. So if we look closely and read it for a while, we can see, okay, I guess this looks like the part where Carol goes to the pile. Then I think Carol picks up the pile here and then Carol goes back to the starting place. But really we should, we should be grabbing all that code, pulling it out and putting those in their own functions that have useful names that aren't just moves and turn lefts. They have useful readable names like this. So that is the start function. And this is where all of our programs will start from now on. And this is going to help with our program readability. So let's see some examples of this. So here we have our program from earlier that has Carol build a tower. Now the problem is we have all this code just hanging out in space. It's in the middle of nowhere and it's not inside of a function. So now we want to introduce the start function. All of our programs will start with the start function. So to define the start function, I'll pull out a function block, give it the name start. And now inside this function, I'll write my program. So all I have to do is highlight all this move it into the start function. And there we go, we have our start function. So if we run this, see that our program still works. Now what's cool is it doesn't matter whether start comes first or second, it doesn't matter where start is defined, this is the first function that's called. When we click the run button, start is automatically called. So if we switch to code view, you can actually see, when we click run, that's the first line. We get to turn right, it hops up there. So Functions in JavaScript can be defined before or after they're called. It doesn't matter. They're, as long as they're defined somewhere in the program, you can call the function. Now, the problem with this is that we still have a pretty unreadable start function. This doesn't read like a nice story. So really what we want is Carol is moving, building a tower, then turning right. That is the story here. So instead of having all these details in here, all the moves and put balls and turn left, let's pull this out and give that its own function. So really we have a job here, build tower. And so Carol moves, and then this is where Carol builds a tower, and once Carol's at the top, Carol turns right. So let's pull all that build tower code, paste it in there, and now we need to call it. So the start function is move, build a tower, and then turn right. That's our entire program right there. Move it to the top. We see that our program works. We can see that in code view just to see the highlighting. Awesome. So that is the start function. And from now on, all of our programs will be starting with the start function. 
Now it's your turn to give it a try.